Okay, so we found our curl in part B, and now we are looking for um, the right-hand side of the Stokes theorem in part C, uh, where uh, we're trying to find this curl uh, dot ds and integrate. Um, so our ds is the differential surface, this flat surface, the shaded area, and um, our ds vector is always perpendicular to the surface. So we have this one lying in a flat 2D plane, so our ds surface vector is going to be in the z direction. Um, there's also an important thing to note with the convention for this um, differential line uh, going around this line vector. Um, it affects the direction that your ds convention will be in. So counterclockwise um, is positive, whereas clockwise is negative. And by positive, we mean out of the page, and negative, we mean into the page. So in this case, um, if out of the page is this positive uh, z hat, um, we're going to be using negative z hat for this problem. Okay, so that's just why we set up our ds for the cylinder here. So you probably have seen these before. Uh, if you have trouble figuring out the ds um, for the coordinate directions, I would first try to ask yourself what the normal vector direction is. And then if you need to, um, there's a cheat sheet attached in the back here on this last page. And if you go down and look at the coordinate systems, you can kind of get a general idea if you are uh, struggle to remember those. Okay, so, so let's go ahead and get started here on problem. Okay. Uh, all right, so we have our curl um, from part B, and we just plugged it in here, and then we have our ds um, that we just kind of explained. So, all right, we have, first off, uh, z hat dot z hat equals one, so our vector component's gonna drop out. The result of this dot product, this vector dot this, is gonna be a scalar. So we won't have vector direction when we're done, essentially. Okay, so we're gonna distribute this r first, so three r squared, 5r cosine of phi, and then we're going to have dr uh, d uh, phi, and we're going to take our negative sign outside here. Actually, I'm going to distribute that negative so it doesn't come back to bite us later. So we're going to have 5r minus 3, oh, I'll do it this way. Maybe it's a little less confusing if I don't flop them around. 3r squared minus 5r times cosine phi dr d Okay, so let's break up our um, differential operators here. So we want our r components and our phi components separated if we can here. So minus three r squared r, uh, five r. Three r squared, I have a typo here. Three r squared plus five r. Um, and we're doing this with respect to r. And then multiplied by cosine of phi uh, with respect to phi. Okay, so let's look at our bounds here. So for the shape of this quarter cylinder, our bounds are gonna go from this inner radius one to this outer radius two, so from one to two. And then our phi bounds are gonna go from zero to pi over two. So zero to pi over two for phi, zero to pi over two, and then from one to two for the radius. Okay, so let's integrate and solve here. Okay, minus three r cubed over three, 5r squared over 2 from 2 to 1, and then our cosine, the integral of that is just sine of phi, so pi over 2, 0, so it's just going to turn into 1 minus 0, so it'll be multiplied by 1 essentially. Okay, so let's plug in our bounds over here, so minus 3, 2, uh, 3 plus 5 squared over 2. three, um, and I'm just doing it this way because I, I find it to be easier, but up to you, uh, totally up to you. Okay, um, all right, so minus uh, three times eight, three plus five times four, or two, okay, minus three times one over three, oh, I'm sorry, minus a negative, so plus, let's distribute that negative, plus, and then minus five times one, over two. Okay, so, and then multiply by one. Okay, so, let's see here. Uh, I'm gonna group these guys, so I have minus three times seven over three, plus five times three over two, 
So I'm going to get minus 7 plus 15 over 2 equals uh, minus 7 plus 7.5, which equals 1 half. So, all right. So our solution here at the end, we found 1 half. And for part B, we also found 1 half. Um, when we solved for the left-hand side of Stokes' theorem, we also got 1 half. Um, so we found that part A was indeed equal to part C, and we were able to verify Stokes' theorem with this problem.